Welcome to another edition of the Rome News Tribune Studio Central Face to Face. I'm Doug Walker. Our very special guest in this edition, Kim Hatcher, Hi. with the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Parks, and Historic Sites Division. I think I got that mostly right, didn't I? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Thank okay. you. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about maybe things to do this summer that won't cost you an arm and a leg, A, and B, just another opportunity for you to get out into the gorgeous Georgia outdoors that we are so blessed to have mm -hmm. in this northwest corner of the state. And I think, Kim, the first thing we can talk about is maybe some of the, the new changes. I, we've got yurts yeah. at Cloudland Canyon now. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. Yurts are sort of like, we, we call it glamour camping. It's halfway cabin, halfway campsite, and it has furniture on the inside, and there's a bathhouse with hot showers nearby and you can pile in your family. It's only $70 a night, and we have a new yurt village at Cloudland Canyon State Park, and they're right on the, trim of, the, right on the rim of one of the hiking trails, and it's a great way to spend a, a weekend getaway. And, and this time of year is just absolutely the perfect time of year to be at any of our North Georgia parks before it really gets hot. I mean, yeah. this part of May, when the rhododendron and the mountain laurel are blooming at, at Cloudland Canyon, at Fort Mountain, at Amicalola, mm -hmm. uh, at, at many of the, the parks in North Georgia, it's just a gorgeous time of the year. Have there been any changes up at Fort Mountain? Uh, any, anything new up there? We do have something new. We have a program called First Time Camper, and it's to encourage people who really have never camped before, but they're interested, they just don't really know how to do it, and they don't want to invest in the equipment before they try it out. So for $50, you get two nights in the campground and you get to borrow really good camping equipment. It's from REI and it's from the North Face. And we'll help people set up their tents. We'll kind of give them a camping 101 lesson. And um, we've got about eight state parks in Georgia that participate in this. And one of them is Fort Mountain, that's new. And so you can have a weekend that's kind of close to home, you know, take your kids. It's really great for moms that want to take their kids camping. Maybe they've never gone camping before. So, and it's a bargain, it's only $50 for the weekend. And something that I'm not sure a lot of people were, were necessarily aware of, the parks are a great place to take your pet. Yeah. And, and you all have a, a special new program that's related to, to Fido as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know how people need more exercise. Well, pets need more exercise too. There's actually an awful lot of poop puppies out there that have an extra pooch. So we've partnered with the Georgia Veterinary Medical Association and your vet can give you a prescription for a healthy walk in a park. And you turn in that prescription for a parking pass. And it's normally $5 to park at a state park. So it saves you $5, you get to go explore a new state park and your dog gets some exercise and you know dogs love being outdoors um, and so we welcome dogs on our trails as long as they're leashed we welcome them in our campgrounds as long as they're leashed and we even have dog friendly cabins some some of our cabins if you reserve them in advance they they allow dogs as well one of the neat things uh, I suppose in a, in a sense um, that has come out of the winter of wet <laughs> is, is that Alatoona is full. We got, yeah. we got plenty of water at Alatoona. We got plenty of water at Lanier right now. Yeah. Um, you all are doing something brand new at Lanier, and, and that's not that long a drive for folks in our area. No, no, no. We're actually uh, building a new state park on Lake Lanier. It'll be the first state park on Lanier, and it's called Don Carter. And um, with all the rain, we don't really know when it's going to open because we're still in construction, and so the rain has pushed it back a little bit. But we're so excited because it's going to have great campsites, cabins with beautiful porches. It's got a really big swimming beach, so you can bring your family and spend the whole day hanging out at the beach. Um, there's boat ramps and fishing. There's a fish cleaning station. Um, there's going to be hiking trails, so we're really excited when, when this opens. Well, that sounds like it's going to be a real, uh, real neat place to visit, and, and yeah. I, I find it amazing to believe that there was not a park on Lake Lanier as, as big as Lanier is all these years. Well, there's a number of you know parks that are run by other agencies, but this will be the first state park on, on Lake Lanier, and you know you're right with the rain. Um, the waterfalls, like at Cloudland Canyon, the waterfall down in the canyon, some, like last summer, it was dry. There wasn't much water. So right now is a fantastic time to go see the waterfalls, to go enjoy some of the water activities that we have throughout Georgia. And, and I'm not sure, again, a, a lot of people realize that, that a couple of our big parks are no longer actually operated, still owned by the DNR, but, but not operated by DNR. Uh, Amicalola and Unicoi both are operated now by an outside concessionaire, is that right? 
Right, and then we have three parks that have lodges in South Georgia that are also operated by um, a concessionaire, but they're, they're still owned by the state, and, and the state is still responsible for those parks, and, and we still welcome people to come enjoy them. Okay. Uh, another program that you all offer um, that, that I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of um, is, is people can get a, a pass, mm -hmm. check out a pass from, from the Sarah Hightower Library and use it. Tell us about that program. Yeah, all of Georgia's public libraries have passes to state parks and state historic sites. And you check them out just like a book. And uh, let's say you wanted to spend the weekend going to Etowah Indian Mounds or New Echota or Chief Van House. You could keep the pass and do that. You could even go camping at Fort Mountain or at Cloudland Canyon and then save that $5 parking fee. And then you turn it back in just like a book. Tremendous program. I'm glad you mentioned New Echota because uh, May 18th is a huge day mm -hmm. at New Echota. What can you tell us about some of the activities going on that day? Well, it's a commemoration of the Trail of Tears, which is the, the name that's kind of given to the removal of Cherokee Indians from this part of the country out west. Um, so it was actually a, an awful time in our history, but we are looking back on that. It's the 175th anniversary of that, and New Echota was where the Cherokee capital was located in this this part of the country. So essentially that's really where the Trail of Tears began. And people are going to be coming in from all over the country to, to mark this occasion and to learn about the Cherokee and what they did for this country. Big day, 175 years, uh, not to the day, but uh, the month of May was, was when the removal actually got underway. Mm -hmm. Now that's this year. Mm -hmm. Next year mm -hmm. is going to be a 150th anniversary of the, the big Civil War year, yeah. as far as the Georgia campaign goes. And, and right. I, I know that you all haven't formalized all of the plans for that yet, but uh, there will be a lot going on, I'm sure. Yeah, Pickett's Mill Battlefield, which is in Dallas, Georgia, they'll have a battle enactment. Um, next year and then Fort McAllister which is actually where Sherman ended his march to the sea it's just south of Savannah so when you hear that he presented Savannah as a Christmas gift that, that's really what they're talking about um, today Fort McAllister is a gorgeous state park they have a Civil War Museum and cannons and earthworks there that you can see but it also has a campground and cabins and great hiking trails and great fishing so they will have a very large uh, ceremony next year marking the 150th of Sherman's end of the March to the Sea. Well, a, an awful lot going on uh, and, and I would personally encourage you uh, if you have an opportunity, particularly over the course of the next couple of weeks, to, to get to some of our mountain parks because uh, I, I think this time of year uh, when those roadies and, and yeah. the mountain laurel and, and the azaleas, uh, you're probably catching the tail end of the azaleas right now, but but when those are all in bloom at this time of year, it's just a wonderful time. And, and Kim, I don't know if I've told you this, but growing up in Virginia, I always thought we had some good, good state parks in Virginia, and I had family in Kentucky, and I thought they had some nice state parks in Kentucky. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna just flat out, as a reporter without a doubt, Georgia state parks are, are the best in the East. Thank and, you. <laughs> and there's just an awful lot to do. And you know, we know everything in the state has been hit hard by, by budget. Uh, in recent years, but, but there is still plenty to do at very, very nominal cost. Yeah, there, we really do have affordable places for summer vacation, and they're almost like resorts. You've got mountain biking and horse, horseback riding, disc golf, geocaching, swimming, fishing. We rent boats, we rent kayaks, we rent paddle boards, we rent bicycles at, at several parks. You can bring the whole family, and so it is very affordable. And, and these parks belong to the citizens of Georgia, and we really want to encourage people to use them. And, and to realize that we're protecting beautiful places, but they're also great resources for outdoor recreation and just having fun. Kim, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, I appreciate it. And thank you for being with us on another edition of our studio.